Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a topic from uh, Conservative Dentistry uh, that is Crack Tooth Syndrome. So Crack Tooth Syndrome, the name itself gives an idea that the tooth uh, has a fracture in it. There is a crack present within the tooth. So while uh, talking about the longitudinal tooth fractures, uh, they may have various types of uh, fractures such as crazy line, uh, fractured cusp or the cracked tooth, split tooth and vertical tooth fracture. But we are focusing only on the cracked tooth syndrome. Okay. So cracked tooth is nothing but uh, an incomplete fracture of uh, vital tooth it can be a anterior tooth or a posterior tooth which involves dentine and possibly the dental pulp so what are the etiology of crack tooth syndrome uh, it can be classified the first one as occlusia etiology it could be a masticatory accident mastication such as uh, sudden and um, excessive biting force on a piece of bone or uh, it can be a damaging horizontal force uh, such as eccentric contacts and interference uh, or it can be a functional force like a large untreated caries lesion and it can be a parafunctional force such as bruxism or clenching and functional force and the horizontal force so these all comes under occlusal etiology then the restorative procedures also can be etiology for the crack tooth syndrome such as inadequate design features the over preparation of the cavity insufficient cuspal protection in inlay only design and deep cusp fossa relationship and the stress concentration one is the design problem okay next is a stress problem that is the pin placement and the hydraulic pressure during seating of tightly fitting cast restorations and physical forces during the placement of restoration such as amalgam and gold inlays we apply lots of pressure in such materials so that can be another classification which comes under restorative procedures and also it can be the developmental reasons such as incomplete fusion of areas of calcification and uh, dental instruments also can be a etiology dental instruments okay so it is uh, when we use high speed hand pieces they can be cracking and grazing on the tooth so all these are the etiology so it comes with occlusal forces restorative procedures developmental reasons and the dental instruments so what are the symptoms of crack tooth syndrome so obviously there will be pain sometimes it will be acute pain on mastication of grainy foods or a sharp brief pain with cold and it can also be slight to very spontaneous pain so it can also be associated with irreversible pulpitis pulp necrosis apical periodontitis and even an acute apical abscess with or without swelling or draining sinus tract may be present if the pulp has undergone necrosis so how do we um, do testing for crack tooth syndrome to do the diagnosis so most commonly periapical test but usually pain is not elicited with percussion or palpation 
if the pulp is vital okay so directional percussion is also advocated direct inspection such as microscope is useful uh, also it can be done with uh, staining with methylene blue methylene blue staining is a useful tool and uh, also we can use iodine and the light we can use that is trans illumination we can clearly see the crack in methylene blue there will be a blue line will be visible where the crack is present and biting test with cotton application rubber wheel or tooth sloth so biting test can also be done and obviously we can go with radiographs radiographs will clearly highlight the radio opaque line so these are the objective tests so the uh, diagnosis involves first one is the history taking then the visual examination then we can go for tactile examination then the bite test we can do periodontal probing then we can use the staining or trans illumination or radiographs or we can remove the restoration and also we can do with surgical assessment that we remove the uh, flap and directly visually see the problem within the bone so how do we manage it so management is uh, basically uh, done by first thing is uh, identifying the proper etiology but the problem with crack tooth syndrome is uh, we need to um, very clearly understand the location and extent of the crack so the location and extent of the crack should be very vital in getting a good prognosis of the problem so the first thing what we can do is immediate therapy where we can uh, splint the tooth uh, and stabilize the tooth using any of our uh, wire method or uh, the materials we use for bonding so first thing we need to stabilize the tooth so treatment uh, the the we have uh, options like uh, rct treatment plus crown it would be the most uh, safest one because if we are not clearly locating the extent and location if you are doing without addressing the pulpal issue the pain may persist even after the initial treatment so if it is very difficult to identify the extent of this crack and if it is involving pulp so always we go for root canal treatment and to be on a safer side we keep a crown over it and also we need to think about the aesthetic part if it is uh, on an anterior side uh, we need to put a aesthetic crown uh, which is not a metallic crown on posterior teeth we can go for a metallic crown so crack tooth syndrome is nothing but a fracture a hairline fracture uh, which might be involving dentin and pulp so if it is involving pulp we need to uh, think about the pulp treatment in a treatment section so there are many symptoms mainly the biting uh, pain on biting and we need to diagnose it properly using any of the methods and go for a apt treatment so that's all about crack tooth syndrome it commonly asked us just as a short note so you can highlight the point in uh, its introduction uh, symptoms uh, its objective test and the diagnosis and the treatment part so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you